Say thank you, Jesus. God is good. Isn't it wonderful to know that we are untouchable? You may not believe it, but I pray you will believe it. Because the word only works with believers. <laughs> The word does not work with doubters. May you be a believer of the word in Jesus' precious name. Praise the Lord. Let's take our seats. Welcome to this midweek service. As, as we go into the word of God, the word of God is going to bless us. Amen. Amen. To be a Christian. To be a Christian is not a normal thing in, in an abnormal world. Praise the Lord. Why did I say an abnormal world? The world is abnormal. Amen. A lot of things are pointing to end time. You, you look at U.S., Donald Trump has just won the election. With all the deceit and all the lies, he has won. It tells you that whatever a man designed, it cannot be perfect. And those that go to imitate what man has created, it's like when you are in the exam hall, and you are believed that the person in front of you knows the subject better than you, mathematics. And as he was writing, you are copying. He was writing, you are copying. And suddenly, the guy did like this and cancelled everything he wrote. <laughs> and as he cancelled everything, he turned his, his page and moved where you couldn't see and started writing afresh. What have you done? You have copied wrongly. Praise the Lord. You have copied wrongly. And that is why we should copy from the word of God. We should copy from the word of God. Amen. Amen. Many people didn't believe that somebody like Donald Trump will win the election. But he has won. Unbelievable, he has won. Amen. But also, it tells us about the nature of God. Camilla Harris, she's a good woman, forthright. But the party believes in everything that God is against. That is the key. Are you hearing me? Her party, I'm not saying herself. Of course, she stands for her party. They believe in almost everything that the word of God is against. And so God will always have the final judgment. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And that is why we must pray for leaders, political leaders. Many of them carry opinion that is not theirs, but the party that produced them. And that is why we are in Jesus' party. That is my point for all this. We are in Jesus Christ party, JCP. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And his party is global. His party is universal. And his concept is unchangeable. And his winners don't go down. Those that stand for Christ will never be voted out of office. You are in office to the end. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There is something that when you become a Christian must happen in your life. And it's called conversion. I'm going to start it today, but I believe God by next Wednesday, if Jesus started, we'll continue with it. Amen. Amen. The conversion of the believer is the fundamental of Christianity. We are not born again to remain the same. We are not born again to be who we used to be. 
we are born again to be transformed, to be renewed. And so, we, we, we are not a club. We are not a social club. Amen? We are not a social club. We are spiritual entity. We don't draw our life from things around us. A Christian does not exist from things that exist around him. We need to understand that we live from above. Praise the Lord. Unfortunately, because of some of the mistakes about faith, we come to think that faith is about living comfortable within. But that's not what faith is. Faith is living the life from above, within. Does that make sense? You live the life from above, within. You don't live the life of faith from within. You live the life from above, within. So when we get born again, there is a need for us to change. There is a demand for us to change, not by men, not by society, but by God. But men will see the change. Men will see the change. It is our change that brings men to Christ. When we get born again, the life let me, let me not say the life. The spirit of Christ is imparted into us. That spirit generates the life of Christ in us. It is impossible to live the Christian life without the spirit of Christ. It's impossible. You can't live it. You can't do it. You can do it. You can live it. It takes the Spirit of Christ or the Holy Ghost to be able to live the life of Christ. So, the deeper you are with the Spirit, the more you live that life outwardly. In Ezekiel 33 verse 11, we are using this to pray and we still use it to pray. He said, say to them, as surely as I live, declare the sovereign Lord, declare the sovereign Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked. God said, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn from their ways and live. So, turning from our ways is the conversion process. He says, turn, turn. Ezekiel 33, verse 11 you will realize that you need a change. In Matthew chapter 3, John the Baptist was preaching. He was a forerunner before Jesus. He was sent to make the crooked way straight. He was sent to turn the people from darkness to light. Between Malachi and Matthew, in between the bridge, it was 400 years. 400 years of nothing. 400 years of utter darkness. And so when John the Baptist showed up, he came to announce to the people that there is need for repentance. There is need for a change. And he said, I'm only coming to announce, but there is one greater than me that will come with the grace to make it possible. And then the Bible says, in Matthew chapter 3, verse 7. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing, John the Baptist saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees. These were the elect. These were like called Moses' disciples. It's me. But the Bible said, when John saw them coming, instead of John celebrating, me, I don't even understand John sometimes. Praise the Lord. I mean, look, he was preaching, repent, 
be baptized. And the Bible says he saw many of them coming to church to repent. Instead of John to celebrate and thank God, you know what John did? Follow me. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to, to him, <laughs> when he was baptized, he said to them, You brood of vipers, a pastor, try that on Sunday morning, try to be empty. Is that in the Bible? In fact, in some translations, say, You children of snakes. Does anybody have that translation? He called them children of snakes. Who want you to flee from the coming wrath, from the coming judgment? Are you not supposed to be happy that you are coming to repent? And that is why sometimes I say that we don't know where to draw the line in evangelism, in so winning. We don't know where to draw that. There is a place to draw a line. I went to, we went for evangelism one time in Germany, <coughs> back in Straubing. And then I went with my PM. And so she was talking to one of the managers in the company where we went to. And I noticed that she was taking too long while I was busy doing my own thing. So later I saw both of them coming. And they came, they came to me. And then she, she told me, of course, in English, and the man speaks not really good English, but a German, of course. I noticed that there was something wrong with the man's eye, one side. And so she was reporting to me that she told him that if he will come to a church, that Jesus will heal his eye. I said, is that what you told him? Yeah, so he has not the man for me to confirm it. Praise the Lord. And I ask her, why did you say that? So let's assume the man comes to church on Sunday. What is he coming for? For his eyes to be open or to be healed. <laughs> now whose problem is it? It's pastor's problem. Praise the Lord. But that's not what Jesus told us to go and do. We are to preach the kingdom. We are to preach the kingdom. After we have preached the kingdom, Jesus said, if they accept you and your message, then you can go on to minister healing. You don't bring healing as an attraction because people will get healed and they will go. Jesus fed 5,000. Jesus fed 4,000. Did any of them get born again? No. No. Why? When Jesus left in Acts chapter 2, the Bible says there were only 120. So it means that the 4,000, the 5,000, none of them was in that church. But they ate and they left. So we present the kingdom. We present the word of God to people in evangelism. You don't offer them any promises. The only thing we are told to offer them is salvation of their souls. And which is the greatest gift? Make no mistake of it. Healing is not a... Does it occur to you that of those that Jesus rose from the dead, apart from Lazarus, we didn't hear about the rest. I mean, you look at it, somebody was raised from the dead. That person should be with Jesus everywhere, isn't it? Did you read that from the Bible? No, you don't read that from the Bible. But those that were sins, that their sins were forgiven, and they recognized that they, are, they were lost in wickedness, every one of them was grateful to God. Every one of them was grateful to Jesus. And that is what happens when you are truly born again. You appreciate your former state comparing to your new state. And so it brings, conversion brings a change into your life. You don't speak the way you used to speak. You don't act the way you used to act. As a non-believer, you used to talk a lot 
I've complained a lot. Do you notice what you talk about a lot, you don't pray a lot about it. And what you pray a lot about, you don't talk a lot about it. That's the truth. That's the truth. Then in verse 8, John says to them something. He said, produce fruit. Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. What is John saying? When you get born again, there are fruits that goes along with it. Isn't it? Suddenly, you are not the, uh, you are not the person you used to be. You don't talk the way you used to talk. The Bible tells us in the book of Jesus, if any man does not offend a word, if any man does not offend a word, the same is perfect. Meaning that our talking is the easiest way for us to sing. Our talking, the way we talk, how we talk, what we say. Praise the Lord. It may not be easy for you not to talk. But if you look at the gate of sin, it's much more heavier to carry. I don't know about you, if your conscience is alive, after you have spoken, you'll be convicted. And you will wrestle in prayer. But of course, if you are used to it, it doesn't matter to you. But John is saying that when you get born again, when you are get filled with the Holy Spirit, he said, live the life that is consistent with the Word of God. Talk like a Christian. Act like a Christian. Do you get it? If you eat like a Christian, you say, Pastor, what do you mean like eat like a Christian? I will tell you what I mean. Don't eat greedily. Don't eat like a glutton. Praise the Lord. Let your moderation be known to all men. You don't have to finish what is in the plate. Are you hearing me? Before you used to finish the pot. But now as a Christian, you don't have to finish the pot. And the evidence is in your body. Amen. The evidence is in your body. You are not a, a, a lightweight. And you are believing God to lose weight. That's foolishness. You don't need to believe God to lose weight. You need to change your eating habit to lose weight. When you added two kilos, didn't you know? Where were you? Four kilos, didn't you know? Five kilos, you didn't know. Then ten kilos, you didn't know. Fifteen kilos, you didn't know. Twenty kilos, you didn't know. And now that you are at a five kilo overweight. You suddenly realize that you are overweight. Something is wrong with you. Praise the Lord. Women, before you got married, you were size 18. And the man saw you and liked your figure. Praise the Lord. She said, ah, Coca-Cola. And now, after wedding, after wedding, after wedding, one, one year, one year, you are, you are not the same again. And your husband said to you, honey, what, what's going on? He said, then I didn't have peace of mind. Then go back to that state. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Go back to that state of not having peace. If it will help your wait. Shout Hallelujah. When we get born again, the way we eat changes. That's my point. Remember, the Holy Ghost becomes the owner of your body. He wants to be able to run in you. Did you hear what I just said? The Holy Ghost wants to be able to jump in you. So, getting born again as a Christian changes everything about our life. It changes everything about our life. It changes. We are moderated in everything. We 
are moderated in food. We are moderated in the way we talk. We are moderated in the way we act. Everything, there is a moderation in it. Praise the Lord. Look at the world diplomats and ambassadors, the way they look like. Just ambassadors of nations. And you are ambassador of the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. So he said, produce fruit in keeping with what? With repentance. In Acts chapter 3, when Peter was preaching, verse 19, he said, repent therefore and be converted. That was the word he used. He says, repent and be what? Be converted. Converted from what? From what you used to be to what you should be in the new creation. Make no mistake, church is not a social club. Church can never be a social club. If you take church as a social club, you will miss the power. You will miss the benefits. You don't just come so that you show up. You don't show. You don't just show up. Amen. When we are coming to a church, we must have the right mindset when we are coming. Listen, we are not just coming to a church just to hear the word of God. It's part of it. It's part of it. When you are coming to a church, there must be joy on the inside. Because you are coming to praise, to worship God. And then in the process, then you hear the word of God. Praise the Lord. But you must be excited that you have an appointment to be in the house of God. Let me ask you, if Tinibu given Tinibu is even too far, if the governor of Lagos will give you an appointment without you knowing what it is for, how will you go there? No, will you not be excited? Me? Hello? Will you not tell anybody you meet that you have felt that governor has invited you? Why don't you do that for Christ? Why? You have joy on the inside that you are coming to church. One of my cousins called me one day on Wednesday. Actually, I got the call. I saw the call after service. I called him back. He said, ah, he called me and I, was, I didn't pick. I asked him, what, what day is it? He said, what day is it? It's Wednesday now. I said, what time do you call? I asked my, you're not supposed to be in church. He said, oh, that he forgot. I asked him, what did you forget about church or about? No, he said he didn't know the preaching. I asked him, why didn't you go to church? He said he was busy. But I said, you had time to call me. Why didn't you go to church? I rebuked him. So he sinners me. I rebuked him so strongly so that he has not called me again. It's been months. Praise the Lord. Oh, I rebuked him very strongly. And he has not called me. And I'm not bothered. But I sent a message. Some of you, somebody will call you during the service that you sent a message. I'm in church on Sunday. But who is it to you that he was calling you during service time? Your friend should be in church as you are in church. Isn't it? If you have Christian friends, when you are in church, they should be in church. And that's the reason why it's not important to carry your phone on Sunday to church. Because if you are a true Christian and your friends are Christian, they shouldn't call you between 9 o'clock and 2 o'clock. Because everyone else should be in church. Or from 7 o'clock to 12 or to 1 or 2. They know, you know, all of you should be in church. But no, not for you. Many of them are unbelievers. Many of your friends are unbelievers. You talk their language after service. And that is why you can't bring them to church because they can see any difference. They can see any difference. That the guy I went to visit, his friends were with him. I said, we didn't see you in church. The friend busted out laughing in his house. I asked him, why are you laughing? They said, Pastor, this one in church. He said, that day he was drunk. He was drunk Saturday to Sunday. That's why he couldn't come to church. I said, no, he was not drunk. He was telling them, he said, will you show me? He was telling them, will you keep going? Will you show me? They said, say the truth that you were drunk. Didn't we go out? I asked him, is it true? 
He said, Pastor, don't mind them. No. I said, is it true? Were you drunk Saturday night to Sunday morning? Were you drunk? Of course he was drunk. And I asked them, do you believe that this one is a Christian man? He said, this one. <laughs> he said, Pastor, this one a Christian. He said, I should forget. This one cannot be a Christian. That's what he said. In his house. In his house. His friend said to him, to his face, this one cannot be a Christian. They were not talking at his back. In presence of his pastor, they were telling him, you cannot be a Christian. Praise the Lord. The things that will judge us on judgment day, we should be careful. Christ does not need to say anything to us, but the things we have done. Jesus, I'm not the one that judge you. He said, but those things that judge you are with you. Praise the Lord. He said, produce fruit in keeping with repentance. Produce fruit. You saw the drama the Washington team did I think this year, some months ago, when the lady, okay, let me just say it, when uh, Elizabeth has been tough on the woman that says, is it a woman or somebody that says things? Okay. And then suddenly the person came to church and met her. And, ah! This one, I'm, no, 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 I cannot be a member of this church. I cannot, and that's the way it is. Our footsteps outside, when they come inside and see us, they will disagree. Are you hearing me? Let your conduct, let your conduct be the best evangelism. Forget the flyer. Let the way you speak be the flyer. He says, bring fruit in keeping with repentance. Let your conduct be connected. And that is why when I hear you speak, when I hear you, even if it's a joke, it will catch my attention. Because even as Christians, when we joke, it has to be clean. Are you hearing me? It has to be clean. Seriously speaking. He said, repent therefore and be comforted that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Shout hallelujah. And that he may send Jesus Christ who was preached to you before. So conversion brings the spirit into our life. Conversion brings the Holy Ghost into our life. It takes a change of attitude a change of our mind Paul said to us in Romans do not be conformed to the world do not do not be conformed praise the Lord but we should be renewed be transformed by the renewal of our mind what is our mind our mind is our intelligent portion the way we think the way we reason he says the renewal of our mind with the word of God is what brings transformation of our lives you cannot be born again and be the same and there is no area that is more evident than in James chapter 5. James chapter 5, verse 16. Amen. He says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I know that some translations say confess your sins to one another, isn't it? It's not the original, that is not original meaning. That's not the proper word for it. Amen. He says confess your fault. 
The Greek word for fault is a Greek word, paraptoma. Paraptoma is not the same word for sin. Paraptoma talks about your failings, your weaknesses. Let me put it that way. Your inabilities. How do you connect it? Listen, he says, he says, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Well, sin does not require healing now. Sin requires forgiveness, isn't it? Is it not true? That your sins may be forgiven. So when he talks about healing, he's talking about the weaknesses. And the Bible says, confess your fault to one another. It talks about your personal feelings and weaknesses and things like that. He says, share it so that we can support one another in prayer. We can encourage one another. And so that we can make provisions for one another. You know, we are not like the world. When we share it, you, you, you go and announce it. You betray the person. No, no. When we share it, it remains a secret. You pray, you encourage, you support. You support. Praise the Lord. And so, if somebody come to you and said, please, I want you to join me in prayer. I have a personal failing in the area of talking. And say, pray with me, because two shall just 10,000. Pray along with me. Support me. And so, the person is sparring his weakness or her weakness to you as a friend, as a brother, for you to stand in the gap for the person. And now, what did you do? You had no people complain the way the person talked. You say, ah, you people are not lying, you know. In fact, he personally told me that he has problem with mouth. You see your life? What were you supposed to do? You were supposed to quench the fire. You had it. Because you have inside information, what do you do? What you are talking about is not the right way. Why don't we pray for the person? Why don't we pray for the person? And many of you, unfortunately, you become professionals. In do you know? Do you know? Do you know what? Ah, there's no time for us to go into Galatians 6, but next, next week we'll do that. Let me tell you, one of the signs that truly you appreciate forgiveness, let me tell you one of the signs that you appreciate forgiveness and that you are forgiven is when others fail. You don't hesitate to forgive them. Because you know how you got yours. Are you hearing me? I am very particular and careful about judging and accusing people. And that is why you can get away with so many things with me. If I ask you, did you do this? And you say you didn't do it. Even if the evidence is there, I will, I will believe you. You know why? I've been a victim once. I've been accused about many things especially in my family. And so because of what I have suffered, if I ask you, did you do this? And you say no. I will accept your no. Praise the Lord. And I will not assume that you are lying to me. I will just believe you. But you know why? If you did this between you and God, I will move on. And that is why it is very easy if you want to deceive me but problem is that those that have deceived me have always landed in trouble with God. Because when I asked you, and you say you didn't do it, I will take it before God, and I will leave it there. Simple. You know, you know, listen, this life, this life, how many years do you have? And then after it, there is eternity. All these things, these things that we, we, we fight and, you know, you, you, you have king-size bed. When you lie down, it's only less than one meter 
by two meters you occupy. Is it not true? There is no way you can cover six by six mattress. So you can buy the biggest mattress at the end of the day. You lie one side. You can roll to the middle. You can roll to the other side. But you only lie what? One side. Clothing. How many can you wear? There was something I said to them last night when I was talking to PD and uh, uh, Princess. I said to them, I said, we are not called to be fashionable. We are called to be passionable. Do you get it? We are not Christians called to be fashionable. We are called, we are called to be passionable. And I went up to say something to them. I said, Fashionable people calculate. Fashionable people articulate. What does it mean to articulate? Where will this end me if I do this? What will be the result tomorrow if I do this? You, you are total. Passion for Christ. You articulate all your conduct. Fashionable people calculate. Uh, I want to save to buy that shoe, to buy that handbag. To buy that, uh, to buy that, my necklace, everything must be to match. Continue matching. I hope you don't match to hair. Praise the Lord. Sunday morning, it takes you two hours to dress for two and a half hour service. How much do you prepare for the service? How much have you spent to pray? No. Even if you pray, it was five minutes. But you spend two hours to match your makeup with your clothing, with your shoe, with your bag. What are you glorifying? The flesh. The flesh. Praise the Lord. On average, on average, it takes me four hours to stand and preach here one hour. It takes me four hours preparation. On average, sometimes it's more. Sometimes the whole day. You are preparing your spirit. You are preparing yourself. Amen. Amen. How long does it take me to get what to wear and to wear 10 minutes? In fact, anyone I jam, I will carry. Praise the Lord. I told you before, my shoes are very simple. Black, brown, brown, black. Very simple. Every cloth will match either brown or black. And so if it will not match, I will not wear it. I will not even have it. You go and show you go and show yellow and purple, red mixed up together. And now you are looking, they have to create a shoe and they have to have the Are you are you okay? What color is your Bible? Say passion. It's our calling, not fashion. And you are so angry because of fashion. Who took your shoe? Who took your shoe? It is the one you want to wear. You have other 20 pairs, but that one you want to take is enough for you not to come to church. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. You have cards for people, members of the church you should be praying for. Before Sunday, you pray with those cards, calling their names and say, Lord, bring them to church. I remove them from every distractions. Whatsoever they will decide from coming to church, let them stand in the gap for them. You do that on Saturday, you do that on Sunday, you do that on Wednesday, you do that every day. It's just five intercession takes five ten minutes to do. I know that some people have confused you that intercession you need to spend about three hours and all that. Well, that is their own experience they are teaching you. It's not from the word of God. When Abraham interceded for Sodom, how long was it? No, how long was it? And I don't think that people should use their experience. It is true that you may have the gift to pray for two, three 
hours, stretch four hours, is good. But don't come and present as a doctrine from the church. No, because in that way, you destroy other people's faith. It is true that there are some people when you offend them, you have to beg, 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 beg one day, beg two day, beg one week, beg two call your friends, talk to them, to beg, and everybody will call, you send messages, and then eventually they will say, if not for the people you called. And so when they are preaching, they say to you, when you offend God, spend time to ask for forgiveness. Pray, 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 pray. God is not like that. When Jesus talked about the prodigal son, that was a lesson for believers. Isn't it? The guy that squandered everything and went away. The Bible said the father was longing for him to come back. The father was on the rooftop waiting for him to come back. As the father saw him, the father ran towards him. He ran towards the father as he was just about to say to him, Father, I am not qualified to be called you. I'm sorry. As he was, the father didn't let him say that. The father grabbed him. Read the scriptures. Read the scriptures. Because the father was eager for him to come back. Do you think that God will be less than that? God is willing to receive anybody that comes back. All you need to do is turn back. Turn back. By the way, Peter that betrayed Jesus. Even when Jesus told him, you will do it. He said, no, I will not. In fact, I will die with you. Jesus laughed. Jesus told him again, you, Peter, will betray me. He said, no, 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 not talking to the wrong Peter. After Jesus rose from the dead, how long? You know, that is why we need to read the Bible. How long did Peter ask Jesus for forgiveness? Hello? In fact, there is no record of Peter ever asking for forgiveness for that thing. Is there? In your Bible, can you see it? But we know that Peter was broken. He wept. And that was enough. Because Jesus knew that he has been convicted of his sins. What if you say, forgive me, you are not convicted? Which is the worst part of it. But you can be so broken, broken, broken by your conduct. Even the word forgiveness is too small for you to utter because you are already shut up on the inside. And God see your heart. Do we have anywhere in the Bible where Peter asks for forgiveness? And that's why I have problem with people that teach certain doctrines. I have problem with it. If you do anything to me and truly you say you are sorry, that settles it. That settles it. That's where. You know what? That's also my way my relationship with God is. When I do something with God and I go something wrong with God and I go and say, Lord, forgive me. I believe He forgives me. Because the measure you give, the same measure, press down, shaking together. If you forgive easily, you will also be forgiven easily from heaven. You know, today is Wednesday. Praise the Lord. But the life of Christianity is a life of conformation. We conform to Christ. We conform to Christ. We are born to change. And I really pray that you'll be around next Wednesday because I'm going to... You, you know, knowing the word of God changes you. When somebody offends you, learn to forgive easily. Because when you were saved, what did you do? You got up and said, Lord Jesus, come into my life, forgive me of my sin. Pa, 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 pa. In five, ten minutes, pa, you are born again. Is that not true? How many of us got born again by reading down and rolling on, on the stone for 10 days? No. How were you forgiven? Did you go and bring goat and cow to be forgiven? No. You got up. You said, Lord Jesus, I accept I'm a sinner. Please, Lord, have mercy upon me. Forgive me of my sins. I repent from today. Come into my life, Lord Jesus. Be the Lord of my life. In less than five minutes, you were through with that prayer. And then you are sins forgiven. And then somebody offended you, the person came and said, first, before you start, lay down. Your wife will say, lay down. Praise the Lord. Do you understand the Christian life? 
he changes everything about you. What used to be important to you will not be important anymore. Fashion that you you will try to ah may your life change. Amen. It is so sweet to serve the Lord. It is so sweet to serve the Lord. Praise the Lord. I often ask myself, what is it that I truly want now? What exactly do I want? And as you grow, you should ask yourself that question. What do you want? If God should bless you financially, what would you be? And truly, truly, when I look at the desire I have, it is nothing to do with things. Nothing to do with things. Praise the Lord. And I continue to thank God. May you have the right desires. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Rise on your feet. The Spirit of God. He is the Spirit of holiness. He is the Spirit of Christ. Lift up your hand. Say, Father, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask for mercy today. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Lord, from today, give me your Holy Spirit to help me to be faithful, to serve you in spirit and in truth. In the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, come into my life. Into my life. I, need I need you. I cannot live this life of Christ without you. But with you, it is possible. Please, Holy Ghost, come into my life. In your fullness and in your power, come and live in me. Come and help me to live for Christ every day of my life. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. If you have prayed that prayer from your heart, a new journey has begun today. Amen. Uh, that's, that's how simple it is with God. God looks at your heart, what you say from your heart. Lucifer, what did Lucifer say? From his heart, he said, I will ascend to the throne of the Almighty. Likewise, if from our heart we genuinely repent, God transforms us. Praise the Lord.